writing task is to write a letter to request post-operative care of an in-home nurse for a patient, Mrs. Thompson, who has undergone right shoulder replacement due to osteoarthritis. Here, you are a registered nurse preparing the discharge of Mrs. Jasmine Thompson and writes a letter to a home nurse, Ms. Nita Roberts, asking her to assess the patient's daily life activities. Let us look into the case note first. If we look into the case note in detail, the details of the patient are given as Mrs. Jasmine Thompson, 73 White Road, Bayview, date of birth 1 July 1942 and age 75. All these details are obviously relevant and should come in the first part of the letter, that is the address and reference. In the social background, we can see there are some irrelevant information given such as she lives in a single story house with large garden, utilizes cleaning services once a month because it doesn't affect the service or the service provider. The medical history part is irrelevant and can be omitted because a home nurse doesn't need to know the medical history of the patient but needs to know the treatment received during the hospital stay and the progress she made during the time period. The information given in the current medications, admission diagnosis, medical treatment and progress are very important and should be mentioned in the letter in an organized manner. Not a single piece of information can be omitted from these parts and doing so you may not get the required score in OET writing. While writing the letter you should keep in mind that not all the information comes in the paragraph mentioning the hospital stay. So the writer must organize the information in such a way that the letter doesn't lose its continuity. Moving to the nursing and physiotherapy management, we can see a lot of information here and seems like all of them are important. Therefore, we should pick out all the relevant information a home nurse needs to know. The two key aspects you should keep in mind while writing a letter is the purpose of the letter and to whom the letter is written and try to pick out the relevant information from the case note by keeping these aspects in mind. Again, try to organize this information so as to maintain the continuity of the letter. In the discharge plan, most of the information given are important such as the right arm sling for 4 weeks, no heavy lifting for 4 weeks, removal of post-operative staples after 10 days, follow-up appointments, etc. Taking all these points, we have to prepare a letter in an organized manner. Now, let us see how we can write a letter with the help of a sample letter written by a candidate from India. When we look into the details of the letter, starting from the address, we can see the address and the date are drafted correctly. In the salutation, Dear Miss Roberts, a comma is missing. There is a minor mistake in the reference as well, which is the writer has not written the age in a proper way. Instead of age 75 year, we can write 75 years. Also, the writer should write years instead of year which is wrong. So, the reference should be written as R.E. colon Mrs. Jasmine Thompson, comma, 75 years. Coming to the introduction paragraph, I am writing to refer aforementioned patient who was diagnosed with osteoarthritis. She had been discharged and requires your ongoing care and support. This paragraph has multiple mistakes. First one is I am. I am doesn't imply anything literally and should use I am or I apostrophe am. Then writing to refer aforementioned patient which is an improper way of addressing a patient. It's always better to use the name of the patient in the introduction paragraph and apart from that when a reader reads this letter he doesn't have to look at the reference to understand the name of the patient. And to score a very good score, the writer should mention the name of the patient in every single paragraph. Since the introduction doesn't mention the name of the patient, the letter becomes less impressive. Here, the introduction paragraph doesn't give any clarity about the patient because from this paragraph, nobody can understand whether the patient had the surgery or not instead. It simply says ongoing care and support for a patient who has osteoarthritis. So again, it clearly fails to depict the idea behind the letter. 
you must mention what kind of service and how it should be offered or delivered to this patient because the case note clearly says an in-home nurse is required for this patient to offer ongoing care and support. Again, you should mention the kind of care and support to be given to the patient. Here, the patient requires post-operative care and support. You have to conglomerate all the required information in the case note into the introduction paragraph because that is where you can make the best impression about your letter and if you fail to do so, you are more likely to score less. Instead of mentioning the discharge date, the writer has just mentioned she had been discharged. There is also a grammar mistake of using discharge instead of discharged. That is the third form of the verb. This letter is most probably written at the time of discharge so you can write the date of discharge that is she will be discharged on this date where you can mention the date which is a perfect way to construct the sentence in the introduction paragraph. By doing so the reader can clearly understand who is the patient, what is the condition of the patient, what kind of support the patient requires, how it should be offered and when the patient is discharged. Since all the services are required only after the discharge, discharge date is very important in this letter. Moving to the second paragraph which illustrates about the hospital stay is somewhat alright except for some minor errors. Here a sentence starts with all the medication which creates a pause on the flow on the hospital stay. Actually that sentence must have been at the last of the paragraph. In the third paragraph, Mrs. Thompson is a widowed woman where the spelling of woman is wrong here and the writer has used the plural form of the word and it should be singular, it should be woman who lives in a single story house. It doesn't matter how many story buildings she lives in because it doesn't affect the service or the service provider and hence the information is irrelevant. Try to avoid all those kind of information in your letter. She is able to carry out activities of her daily living. Her daughter will accompany her for post-operative care. These two sentences don't make any logic because it is improperly clipped. It would have been better placed either in a hospital stay, that is in the second paragraph or in the discharge summary. That is, during the time of discharge, what is the condition of the patient? However, it is mentioned in the social background which is irrelevant and doesn't make any sense to the reader. It would be appreciated if the writer could organize the information at the right place with the right flow and relevant information so when the reader reads it, he feels good. Her daughter will accompany her for post-operative care. This sentence has no flow, no origin and no ending which is incomplete and doesn't provide any relevant information. As per the case note, this patient has two children who are not living nearby but after the surgery when she gets discharged, her daughter will accompany her and stay with her for one month. But this short and simple sentence in the letter fails to give any particular information mentioned in the case note. So when you are providing information, you must ensure that it is important, correctly placed and it delivers what it's supposed to deliver. In the last paragraph, upon discharge, sling on right arm and heavy lifting are to be avoided for four weeks. The sentence is quite inappropriately clipped with the wrong connection of dissimilar ideas. The meaning of the sentence is not clear because the sling is to be remained for four weeks and the patient is refrained from lifting activities for four weeks and this is the idea the writer should have conveyed but according to the sentence written in the letter she must not use the sling for four weeks and lift anything for the same time period. The last sentence please note the staples are to be removed on the 10th day. Here the information is valid and should be with the discharge plan. We can see that this paragraph is not at all properly organized. The writer has written the conclusion as, please contact me for any queries. This doesn't make any impression on the reader. The writer has used your instead of yours in your sincerely and a comma is missing there as well. You must use capital C and N for charge nurse. 
Overall, this letter doesn't have adequate words. This letter is composed with hardly 140 words. That is, lesser words imply lesser information and this letter is too short which fails to make any impression on the examiner. This is a very good example to understand what not to follow while writing a letter. Always remember to provide adequate information so that the service provider can understand clearly the purpose of writing this letter. Thank you. New method for OET learning. How are you preparing? Online or offline? For speaking and writing, you can get tutor reviews. How will you be able to manage your reading and listening? How can you manage your self-practice easier than never before? Learn OET in Merlin's Way. Most successful OET learning method from world's best online trainer. Chat now. MentorMerlinExam.com